Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Life Bruce Podcast. We're going to talk about the We Cross tiers again. So I've updated these uh, according to my personal feelings that I had prior to uh, the GP, and then as well as after the GP, I updated them as well. Um, so I think this is sort of pretty good as to where we are. You're going to see that there's been a lot of um, movement in this, most notably just things starting to fall off, a few things going up. Um, but as the format gets a little older, there's starting to be a few things that are um, just sort of popping up as these might be just sort of more powerful or nuanced than, than the other choices. Um, plus, we just have the GP, so things actually shake out pretty clearly, like we have pretty clean data. I don't have all the official data yet from uh, Hellfire, but I did make a conscious effort in between almost every single one of my rounds to... to walk around all of the top tables and the middle tables and the lower tables and see where things started floating to and floating up and floating down. So I have a pretty good gut feeling that these are pretty close to accurate. Um, you'll see I added a new thing here too. Aside from the up arrows and the down arrows, you'll now see these little like uh, life for symbols. And they go ahead and denote that these are a new deck to the format that are popping up. And you'll actually see there's quite a bit of new decks to the format that have popped up that are actually pretty cool and pretty uh, uh, tiered. I also made a bunch of decks for my um, testing purposes, brews that I was thinking about taking to uh, the GP and trying to win with. And um, I think they probably deserve to be somewhere on this tier list, too. But since I'm literally the only person who knows they exist, I'm not going to be so arrogant as putting in my own opinions in here and be like, well, this is actually a pretty good thing. No, I mean, if people start playing them after we, we announce them uh, in the next couple videos, we'll start going over it. I also want to point out this is going to be one of two videos that we're going to start with. This first one's going to be the tier list. Uh, it's usually backwards. We usually go over the new decks first and then place them in the tier list. We're doing it this way now since we're pretty seriously in the, the meta. Um, because the GP happened and people were so focused on set 9. We were basically testing set 9 for a long time now. So we know that these are basically solidified in what they are and sort of their best versions. The GP didn't actually give us very much new tech. It gave us a little bit of new tech on certain decks. But it really only more reinforced things that we already kind of knew. Right, as far as the S tier goes, we're back into this point where still where there's no S tier. Everything has a really good shot at winning. And A tier was basically all the top decks at the um, GP. You had a Deus Adams decks uh, that inevitably won the form, the, 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 um, the decks. I actually, I'm going to be a little hot take here and say, I don't know if it's the best deck, even though both, both Adams decks got into the finals. Because with the way that finals work, single elimination knocks out things. Bad matchups actually can can really affect certain stuff, and I think the Adams decks actually had pretty fair matchups their whole way up, um, whereas some of the other decks like the Esper decks had to kill each other off or were up against sort of like these decks that didn't necessarily make it well for them like Nova. So really it's best to look at the top 16, best and top 8, and really make the judgments. I'm going to leave Atomic Deus here at sort of the top of A tier just because I think... The 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 it, it the results should uh, appeal itself to it here, but there was a lot of atomic decks that did not make the top tables and uh, floated towards the upper mid tables, but weren't able to really break it into the top top tables either. So this is this might just be the fact that these two Japanese players were really really good. Um, the next one is Tama Control, um, Discard Control. While I was the only one in the top eight that made it with Tama Discard Control, I can heavily say at no point in time did I feel like I had a bad matchup whatsoever. I only thought I had fair to good matchups. The only time that I, I actually changed my mind against that is the, is the top eight where I went up against uh, Hannah and I played the, against Team Nova, which is a horrible matchup. This is the first time I ever felt awful about my matchup. Um, I genuinely think this is still a pretty good um, choice, and I actually do still rate it higher than the Esper, um, the Esper Madoka control deck, although I think there's probably people who would argue with me on that. Um, simply because I like that Tama always have outs to every single deck, and I think that the Madoka deck was probably better for the GP because after getting through all the... Uh, aggro that was in there and if you flow to the top I think it was better prepped against the uh, discard the the atomic decks and the Tama decks themselves so I think Tama's the better more rounded one whereas I think Madoka was better placing in specifically top decks that doesn't necessarily mean it's better it's just a different choice 
However, one of the things that I have noticed is that white aggro is the premier aggro deck of the format. Anyone I talked to, basically, who was playing white aggro agreed that they felt strong. They felt like they had some matchups they basically auto-lost, and a lot of ones they auto-won, and then a bunch of fair matchups as well. So it's sort of the dis complete difference of the Tama deck, where it's a 50-50 uh, completely, the white aggro deck ended up being like very strong the whole way across, but had some bad matchups. But they, those bad matchups were a little, little less existing. Um, so I do think it's the premier deck. You'll notice that dash is down here B, and I think I'm pretty firm about leaving dash and B tier. Um, and that is because it just didn't pan out at the the GP. And not only did it not pan out at this GP, it didn't pan out at the uh, Japanese GP either, where it debuted. So it is almost double, double, double down on it. Just is strong. It, it's a boogeyman. It's a check. It's a check against certain decks. You know, it checks to see if if uh, greedy decks exist and it punishes them. Um, but it isn't quite all encompassing, powerful enough to pop itself over into A tier. Um, which makes sense to me. See, back when Lion was really, really, really strong, it was um, almost unbeatable in the fact that it had this amazing aggro I win button. Uh, we would later now have certainly kind of some way to beat it, which is why it's in C list here, uh, C tier. But um, Hirana, Dash Hirana never really got to that level. It got close, but it always felt like, no, there is some tools to beat it. And if you hit those tools, you can win. The Esper decks usually have walls and damage mitigation to do that, like guard recursion. And while it requires them to hit every beat correctly, and if they stumble at all, they'll lose, um, it's still doable. Whereas back in the day when Lion was the, the big bad, that wasn't even a possibility. You just, you just stumbled over. You just, you just ram, ram shot over everybody. Um, getting back to this Tama white aggro deck, it is worth noting that there was a fair amount of white aggro decks that were in the um, top tier. Tiffany played a white aggro deck as well, and the whole time when we were playing against each other and playing it through various, various matches, it always felt like it had a, a pretty solid path to victory, and that it could kind of fluctuate between an incredibly fast aggro deck or a um, somewhat fast mid-range deck, you know, uh, depending on how you do it. The top deck was with Starfruit, who used a version that was actually had Esper assists, but the main deck was Mono White. Um, and the idea was it was sort of levying some of the um, the control Tama stuff to be able to survive a little bit longer game and be able to sort of like navigate um, that 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 like I said that ramp where it could be, it could be a aggro deck or it could be a mid range deck. It depends on the pace that you're playing it at, and you're sort of like as Tiffany was saying with the um, the old ancient surprise decks, you have a foot on an accelerator and you control the pace of the game. Um, I think that is actually really good and potentially something worth looking into. But the white aggro deck on its own as just a white aggro deck, I think it's going to be strong. I think it's going to be strong for a little while longer, um, moving into set 10, maybe even set 11 before it starts falling off a little bit. And that's just because aggro in general is going to start falling off. Uh, and then speaking about aggro in general falling off, we, you'll notice that we have this uh, X and Deus uh, DXM team here that's aggro resistant, has assassin, has some Enter burn, has some silver bullets. Um, this deck still did r really well. I I um, could very easily see anyone who had slightly different breakers making it into top eight with these X or Deus uh, aggro team aggro decks. I actually think they're quite incredible. Um, I do not think they are a brain dead deck. I think you need to know what you're playing, and more importantly, you need to know how to play against every single deck in the format to pull it off. Um, but it is a good deck. I think it holds it into the A tier, which is when we split here firmly into B tier. I think Dash Hirana is a very good segue to splitting firmly into into the B tier. Um, sometimes it just loses on itself, right? And and that makes it just kind of run to B tier. It's able to like just run over a ton of decks, um, and it also doesn't require a ton of learning. You need to know when it is time to put the, the kill button on, right? When it's time to hit that I win button, and when it's time to hold and reserve. And basically, that's the hard part of the deck. Once you master that, you can basically play any any deck with it. Um, but it is uh, is firmly, I think, B tier. Uh, just below it is probably the mill the the mill deck. I was reasonably certain I was going to land on this for um for the GP actually. Um, I was testing it out ton 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 ton. Uh, you can be, play a 
green or black version. It really doesn't matter. That's the main two colors that you do. This, this third color that you go for is going to be either blue or it's going to be white. One of those things that helps your attrition. Generally speaking, I like white because I like some of the things that um, Remember does with Mel's, uh, Mel's accessories. Um, so I would say you're going to probably end up in that, that scenario. The deck is strong. The deck is really strong there. Um, and in fact, it actually has a lot of play against some of these decks, right? Like it can very easily win against Ash Hirana because it's able to do such heavy guard recursion, such defensive board states. It's able to win against X and Deus by just basically being resistant to aggro and just punching back harder. Um, and it, actually wins pretty easily against the Esper decks, surprisingly enough. It struggles a bit against the Atomic decks, it struggles a bit against the White Aggro decks, um, which makes it why I'm just popping it down into here. It has a very split A tier, um, an a, sp a split A tier uh, matchup rates, which is why it ends up in B tier. Aya is uh, kind of a strange thing. I put it in B tier, although it doesn't feel that strong, it feels like a Aya could actually drop down to like here-ish, maybe below Yuzuki in in the tier, but the reason why it's still so high is it's still the only deck doing the Aya tempo thing really well, although I'm going to be honest with you, Carnival is kind of giving it a run for its money, uh, which is really nice to see. Um, Aya is this disruptive uh, deck, usually in blue-white, uh, that is still very nasty, uh, if your opponent doesn't know how to play against Aya, they will lose. Just basically, that's that's what I found. Uh, Aya was another one I was testing for the GP, specifically uh, behind Mel. And I really wanted to make Aya work, and I got it very close. Like, I to a point where if no one really knew the trick against Aya, which, by the way, is pad out your hand slowly but surely, like, that way their, their discard becomes inefficient, um and practicing long game, you know, sources of draw cards, and playing around Madoka Break, you win. You win every single game. Um, once your opponent knows what's the how to play against Aya, uh, your, disc, your, your, your win rate drops dramatically. But because it's so surprising, it ends up being still pretty strong of a choice in the, um, in the, deck, in the deck choices. Uh, I didn't want to bring it to GP, though, because I figured people would know what's up uh, in the top tables, and I wasn't willing to, to risk that. Um, Carnival surprising me. I actually thought Carnival was going to be C tier. The more I've played against it, the more I've played with it, the more I've seen um, people play it itself. Um, it end it ends up being like specifically the real McQuaid. The version he was playing was really really strong. Um, I think it is probably a lot stronger than people are expecting it to. There's ways to shut it down. Um, I think, remember, uh, the the Signy does a really great job shutting it down. Um, there is a way to shut it down where you sort of, like, screw its hand. Um, there's also a way to shut it down by, by really enter-starving it. Um, but uh, the way that the real McQuaid sort of, like, dodged those things by having um, Nanashi as the assist, that allowed him to, either way I attacked him, enter or, or cards, he was able to sort of recoup that a little bit is a pretty clever solution to it. I think it's a little it's a little bit crutchy in the fact that like you know you have a weakness so you're you're putting your your you're, you're patching that that hole a little bit whereas I think better decks just don't have holes and then you just are just really good regardless. Um but it it does a lot in disruption. I think I was always talking about how I was theorizing that there was this deck that is in red, black, blue. That's a tempo deck that has a lot of ways to disrupt, right? It could do enter burn. It could do card, uh, card. Um, uh, it could do card discard. It could do uh, milling. It can do a lot of ways to open in lanes. But I would always mention that red is kind of awkward in that because red also wants to be aggressive. And because of that, you never really find the way to make it tempo. It's usually just aggro. Carnival is an interesting one because Carnival acts more like a white-blue center, kind of like Aya. And so it ends up being that is kind of the missing key. Because you have that sort of like color, weird color support, you're not really running white. You're just kind of faking it with Aya, with Carnival's abilities. Um, it ends up being 
pretty strong, I think. Um, plus, you're in the right colors to take advantage of all the coins that you get for Carnival as well. So I think this is actually a surprisingly strong deck. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it actually sneaked up, and if a really, really refined version even sneaked into A tier. Um, Tamago keeps dropping. Sorry, Tamago. Uh, the discard control deck keeps just dropping. Um, that's just because it's like very clear that there's a, basically a Tama version, aka a white version, and a blue version that's a superior in, in the Madoka. And Tamago, while good, and I think it's it genuinely good, um, it just doesn't have the tools necessary to deal with the field that you need to do in order to win those games. Yeah, it freezes, for example. And, and the freeze thing is going to actually rear its ugly head again later when Remember the uh, Elrig shows up in the next set. Um, but it doesn't, it just, it the discard thing, the random discard is still really good, and it's specifically very good against the Esper Mirror, but it loses a lot to that the other Esper decks do not give up, and because of that, it's got to drop down. It's just like, it's sort of a counter to those, but it's not an all-inclusive answer. The Yuzuki deck I've dropped a little bit with the red aggro Enerburn. It's actually surprisingly still quite strong. Um, and there's a weird kind of build that you can do as well that's actually red-white. That's just like purely red-white almost, and it's really, really strong. Um... Uh, I'll give you I'll give you guys the 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 tea on that later. I have I have a brew that I I've made that's like almost like a mono white deck with Izuki as the center. Uh, that's really 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 good. Um, and I think it's still quite strong. I actually think it like a lot of these top decks are really ener greedy, not including Mel. Mel is not ener greedy. Mel has so much ener to work with. Um, a lot of these decks are ener greedy, and Yuzuki can screw them because of that. But um, it loses to some of these decks that really don't care too much about the the uh, ener burn, which is actually more of the decks that are down here that are more like flippant with the amount of ener they get, or maybe less efficient with it. Um, so because of that, it's sort of paying this precarious balance. Um, Guzuku, however, has shown up, and it was not really in the top tables, but it did show up in the high mid tables to the mid tables as just a recursive aggro deck, which is kind of cool. It echoes a little bit of what Deus and X was doing up here, um, but it does it in a different way and has a little bit more of a reliable way to uh, punch in damage there. So I like that it can play a little bit more tricky. Uh, with it definitely plays differently than this deck does, but similar in the same sort of like you're milling yourself, you're bringing things back, you're milling yourself, you're bringing things back. Um, I think it's a little less versatile than Exodus, which is why I'm putting it down here, but I think there's still things you can do with it. I think it had a pretty strong showing at the uh, GP. I was actually going to rate Kazuko <laughs> in C or D tier prior to that, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um, so I've got the Umir deck here now at the bottom of B tier. It's still doing something kind of different than Aya. It's not quite as good anymore, um, but it's it's struggling it's struggling a little bit with that. It's basically the same deck as Aya. It's just a little less enter efficient. Um, but if the game goes long, 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 Umir has a chance to be better than that. And there is this trend to going to turn eight, turn nine now, which means that Umir still has a niche that it can follow. Um, which is why it's still barely surviving in B tier. Um, and that's that's the main reason. I've dropped Lion down to uh, C tier. So I have this new brew for Lion that's basically Dash Lion, uh, and it is still in team. I'm saying Dash, it doesn't have Tama in it, but it does have Flathro. Um, and it, it ends up being weirdly even more powerful than Dash Hirana. It was one of the wacky ones that Tiffany and I were, were um, practicing a bit for GP. And there were certain games where we just, like, it just demolishes everything on this list uh, very, very easily. But the ability for it to lose on itself, because it's sort of like, it's trying to be aggro and do a lot of aggro things. It's trying to be flat throw and do some of those flat throw combo things. And it's trying to do endless punchline and do the endless punchline thing while it's also trying to tax for guards. It's a little thin on what exactly it does. And because of that, I've dropped it down to C tier. It had a way higher fail rate than the, the Dash Hirana deck. Um, its fail rate was closer to like 15%. Um, and I just felt uncomfortable running anything that had a fail rate that, that much at the GP. However, that being said, if you play a best of four or a best of, sorry, like a four rounds or three rounds at your local, this could secretly just win you, like just demolish everything in it. Because if you just go hot, and it's not hard to go hot with this, you'll take over. So I'm keeping Lion here. There's still also not very much MG MGD. 
So normal line is also still pretty good and can, can consistently stay in C here. Bang, I dropped. It was sad. It was up here. Then Mel came into existence. Mel does everything that Bang does just better, with the exception of Enter. It doesn't do Enter as, as well as Bang, um, but you can supplement that in the main deck. In fact, you need to, because the green cards are not very good, but the ones that say Enter Charge are pretty okay. So you, you end up needing that sheer amount of cards that are okay in the Mel deck anyway, so you end up having the correct amount of Enter Charge. So Bang drops, uh, which is a little sad. Hopefully it'll be back one day. I like Bang a lot. Um, next we have uh, Eld Eldora Atomic. So I had Eldora Atomic in the D list, I think, and it's kind of risen because just through sheer um, numbers, uh, if people really were bringing it. There was at least three or four different uh, Atomic Eldoras in the GP, which means that it's got a f enough of a fan base that through sheer representation, it's sticking around in, in C tier. I think also Atomic on its own is still quite strong just as an archetype. So, uh, I mean, clearly, number one up here. So I, I think even on its own, it can just kind of float Eldora regardless. You could probably say Eldora, and then I could probably also go slash Miko Miko um, and leave those ones there. And it would basically be more or less of the same. Um, so then Nova comes in, right? Just almost completely off of Hannah's uh, Team Nova uh, win in uh, to get to top four. Congrats on her, by the way. Um, I've actually kind of placed it up because the more and more I thought about, the more and more I was like, it's actually got a niche right now. And that's the thing is I don't think it necessarily is amazing right now, but I do think it has a specific niche. And that niche is just specifically that um, it kills a lot of these stall decks, right? You've got this Esper stall deck here. You've got an Esper stall deck here. You've got another stall deck here. You've got some decks that would love to go long, an Aya and Carnival. So you've got these, these decks that are um, just very strong in terms of how long they take to, to win the game. Um, and because of that, I think you end up with a scenario where Nova actually has a, a, a relatively good niche now. The other thing that it does do as well is stop red aggro decks in their track. And there's enough red aggro decks between X, Dash, and I and, and Yuzuki, and some real decks too that are floating around, that it is got its niche. So I don't know how long it stays here for, um, but it's cool to see that it definitely can still still rock if you know how to use it. Um, I've dropped Akiyano down to to um, the uh, the Esper sort of like down here. I still think it's fine of a deck, and it probably is doable. It's just Tama is so much more refined at this point, as well as if you wanted to do something different, Madoka also is a pretty refined version. Um, Musica 2 with its uh, Cosmos aggro deck, it's it's at the bottom because it does the job consistently as it needs to, but it's it's just it's just not very deep or layered anymore compared to the rest of the decks. So it's just sort of like guarding the bottom before it's going to eventually float away. Um, I've dropped a lot of stuff from the last uh, time down, 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 down. Um, and that is to say uh, Iona is down, Yuki Yuka is down, Ott is down, uh, Maho Maho is down. Uh, Senga 2 has been the stalwart defender of basically being here since set 3. <laughs> and just like being like, nope, I'm a fine deck. Uh, and Paraluke is also now down. Uh, this is all to say that just they just none of these decks really achieved much at the GP, nor have they achieved much in general. They are still fine decks, but they are underachievers for sure. Um, it is worth saying, I know people are going to hate me for the Paraluke over here. Um, the Paraluke discard decks have not done anything. Um, I, I've kept them around through sheer representation. People really like Paraluke. Uh, I assume just the character, um, but at the GP, I I have seen it went to mid tables and then immediately back down to low tables. Like it, it just has not been able to function uh, nearly all that well. So that's what it's gonna stay for now. Don't worry. Eventually, Paraluke's gonna get a new card in the Desona sets that are like utterly amazing and won a GP. So you know, if you're a Paraluke fan, you'll eventually be up here. But just for now, you're down here. Uh, and that is the. Uh, tears as they stand right now. I think some things, just if I was going to say some last things, I think this is where it's going to stay for a while. 
you could shift something up one or something down one, but this is generally speaking where it's going to stay. Again, if you were someone who's like, where's my real deck? Because I deleted out the real deck because it's not super, super great. Uh, I feel like someone's going to comment below now being like, but but I'm the real player. Um, just look at whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to enter burn with, with real, okay, cool. Replace Yuzuki with that real and you'll probably be fine, you know, that kind of stuff. If you're trying to dash with real, okay, cool. Replace Hirana with that and, and drop a couple turns and you'll be fine. Um, that's, I think, where we're going to stay for quite a while. However, uh, set 10 is looming on the horizon. Uh, I have my finger pretty heavily on the pulse now just due to way, way, way too much testing for the GP, and now I'm going to have to test <laughs> the winter GP that has it. I don't think there's a ton that's really going to shake things up here. What I think you will see is that Tama discard control this Esper deck, is going to turn into a uh, into remember, uh, which what I was saying with Tamago has freeze functionalities too, and just has way better filtering, and maybe even goes up to here into S tier. So that's something to keep on the horizon. You know, if you wanted to basically practice for that remember deck, playing the this Tama Esper deck is probably the way to go, or playing Madoka discard is also probably the way to go. Just play an Esper deck for a little while; you'll get used to it.